this has to be the most physically strenuous exploration I've ever tried to get to. Here we finally are. We're at the Caro School Complex. And that right there is what brings us here today. All right, so let me explain what this place is. We are in Caro, West Virginia, and this is the Caro School Complex. That is the former Caro High School, we'll talk more about. I understand that that is the former cafeteria building, and the first building that you get to when you get up the hill here is what I believe was the former elementary school. Uh, now, I don't know anything about the elementary school. Uh, I know a little bit more about the high school. Um, let's check out these outer buildings, and then we'll go ahead and uh, see what we can find out about the high school. Now, you will see tons of no trespassing signs here, but I do just want to mention that I did contact the family who owns the place and uh, explained who I am and what I do. And as long as I don't go inside, because the buildings are, in, in fact, the high school is partially collapsed, um, but it's too dangerous to just go in. So uh, they did give me permission graciously to uh, walk around and document the place and as I was looking in there um, it has a, an extremely strong uh, mildew smell to it I don't have a respirator it's probably best that I don't try to go in there So as I understand it, the elementary school, which is this building we're looking at now, was built at a later point, um, although I don't actually have any idea uh, year-wise when that was, with the high school building being the only original building up here. Um, and if you guys can do me a favor, um, just take what I'm doing right now as a way of seeing this place. Um, and as a means of documenting it and don't come in here yourself because the owner was very nice to let me in but she made it pretty clear that a lot of the reason the place is in such bad shape is that they just can't keep people out of it um, and especially with the high school building and it being in just such bad condition um, you know it's it's not only just like a trespassing issue but it's really a safety issue too um, and I will tell you, the owner of the property is a sheriff, so I just wouldn't even risk messing with her. Oh, look at that mural over there, Ninja Turtles. That's cool. We had water fountains like that in my school back in the late 80s, early 90s. Probably not going to go around the side of the building here because it's all grown up, but there is a downstairs to the place, I think. Um, actually, let's risk it. Oh yeah, there is a downstairs. Well, it's not as grown up as I thought, so let's get down here. This is the back of the school. Obviously, this, they must have, uh, when it was probably still open as a school, took the time to really 
make it look good from the side you could see. It looks like they haven't painted this for a very long time. There is a really strong breeze coming out of this building. And it smells damp and just gross. And you can see the mold on the walls. This has got, oh, it's got a cobweb in my face. Um, this has got that same weird, like, wind coming out of it. it. Looks like everything inside is melted, too. I don't know if that's from the moisture or maybe because it's not used. Maybe this building just sits here and bakes in the heat. But the ceiling fan is drooping and everything else is, too. Alright, so we're now heading back up the hill uh, toward the cafeteria and the high school um, and just trying to give you guys a little bit of information about this place. Um, in 1971, well let me back up, the high school was built somewhere around 1921 or 1927, I can't quite remember, and when it originally opened it was Grant District High School, but very soon after that it became known as Cairo High School. Then, uh, in 1971, that was the last graduating class. All right, and just to uh, document what I'm saying, I've been here for about five minutes and already two motorcycles have come up the hill here in the middle of nowhere probably with the intention of going in the school, saw me here and are now turning around. So um, again, just for your own safety, but also so you don't get in trouble, just don't try to come here uh, unless you have the owner's permission. But uh, to finish up the story, um, the last graduating class of the high school was in 1971. Um, it then for a short time became either a middle school or junior high school. Uh, I can't remember which one. It became one and then soon after the other. And I, it's not clear to me whether that took place here in the high school building or if it was down in the elementary school building. But that did happen uh, for a few years and it may have been mid to late 80s or possibly early 1990s. Uh, Ritchie County consolidated all of their high schools. Um, so in 1971, when this one closed, um, these went over to, the students going to this school went over to Harrisville High School um, in the county seat. And then the, um, and then when the schools consolidated, I believe in the early 1990s, um, they all went over to, I believe it's a Pennsboro area where uh, Ritchie County Junior Senior High School is. So this building that we see here uh, was the school cafeteria and although it doesn't look on the outside like it's changed at all, uh, I've actually seen pictures of the inside of this and it is completely remodeled. It's like amazingly remodeled inside uh, and if you are interested it is uh, for rent for $1,600 a month. I don't remember the details on that, but uh, if you're interested in it, um, you can contact the campground uh, because as you can see, the school grounds here have been changed into uh, a campground area. Uh, the former basketball court area right there, you can still see the hoop. Uh, and this area down here, now um, we're going to talk about it a little bit later. It may in fact be the spot right where that camper is, but there was a gymnasium up here too. Uh, we'll, I'll fill, fill you in a little bit later with that. Um, and that area has also been converted to a camping area. So 
So as you can see, it, it looks like it might be working on the renovation just a little bit with the washer and dryer there. And again, they're, they're extremely strict. They definitely don't want people in this place. was the foundation of something. Uh, looking down the hill here, you can actually see the new bridge that's been in, being put in in Cairo right now. If you go to the left of where that bridge area is, that's coming in from Route 50. And I can see it, I don't know if you can make it out in the video, but just behind those trees, literally barred and soldered shut. It's like a maximum security cafeteria. I'm guessing it is either where this camping area is right here or over in that little area right there. But there was a gymnasium here. And the gymnasium was gorgeous. Uh, it was torn down, I believe, last spring, so spring of 2018. And I'm really regretting that I didn't get out here in order to shoot that. Uh, it was a unique gymnasium. Uh, the only one that I've seen that is anywhere in any way similar is Ban Johnson Fieldhouse, the old part, Fenton Court at Marietta College. Um, and I think that that's because Goshern Auditorium, which was the original part of that building, was built just around the, about the same time as the gym here. And this one was uh, 1927. So the high school itself was built, I believe, around 1921 or so. And I believe the gymnasium was built uh, just a few years later. Oh, nice. okay, well I'm actually off on that because as you can see, make out high school, so Grant District High School 1913. We're just on the opposite side of the high school from where we were before. And one thing I want to mention while we're looking at it this way, if you see the way that that flagpole on top is bent, I always thought that there it was bent at some point, and I couldn't figure out how it would get bent like that. Um, but then I saw a picture of it when it was new, and it's, it's actually supposed to be like that. And I want to show you this building before we go to the high school. I, I'm not really sure what this is, but I'm guessing maybe some sort of like maintenance shop. I don't know if it was for the custodians here or if it was more of like a maybe a workshop um, like if you 
I don't know, did woodworking or metalworking or something. It seems like it's kind of like the workshop for the campground now. But, because they've got their, their lawnmower and their flag and stuff in here. But it doesn't look like there's, other than maybe some of those chairs back there, doesn't look like really much of any of this is related to the school. All right, so this obviously was an entrance at one time, but it's been leveled off to be a camping uh, space there. So we're gonna go around to what is actually the back of the building. And from what I can figure out, the back of the building is actually what you see from downtown. Unless I'm actually completely turned around, but I think that's the case. The back, I don't know probably can't see it through the trees there but I can just barely make it out you can see the whole city right down there and so this the back of the school is what you'd actually see if you're downtown now I was not expecting this because the owner told me not to go inside because it had partially collapsed but she told me it was the staircase but it legitimately looks like I mean, the walls are collapsing, too. So, yeah, and this is even reinforced with, like, rebar, and it's still falling apart. Take a look in there. It's set up just like there are still students there. All the desks are in place. Not sure what this is. This must have had a roof on it at one time. Or maybe that's part of that roof where that tar line is. I mean, that's just wide open. Look how mossy these stairs are. Wow. So as I go down here, Feel. Oh, wow, look at that. The Columbus Heating and Ventilating Company. These are the boilers. So we're essentially in the basement right now. I'm not stepping across the threshold because I did tell them I wouldn't go in. you can see in that window you can see there's just part of a wall completely missing in there um, I was talking to some of the alumni yesterday and essentially what has happened is that at some point after the school closed uh, the school district or whoever it was that owned it at that time just stopped taking care of it so uh, the roof went and with the roof, of course, everything inside got uh, ruined. And that's why it's in as bad a shape as it is. Here you can see a little bit of the color blue, which uh, their colors were blue and gold. Look at the corrosion on that metal door. And we're now looking back toward the campground at the side of the school here. And before I show you any more, I want to mention that I, the mascot here was the pharaoh. Uh, the school was built in 1913 during the Egyptian revival period. And Cairo itself, named after a place in Egypt with the Egypt Cemetery. I think there's a 
Of course, I can't think of all of them now, but th there's quite a few things named after places in Egypt here in town. And I've heard that it's called uh, Cairo because it floods, <laughs> like the biblical flood <laughs> in the Bible. Um, but uh, what I want to tell you guys is because um, in honor of the high school, which in all honesty will probably not be here very long, and it's only people that are interested in this type of thing like us that really appreciate the beauty of the decay here. Um, we uh, at Abandoned PKB are going to be creating a t-shirt uh, that's going to say Caro Pharaohs uh, and we'll have the King Tut mask, uh, the desk ma death mask of King Tut. Because Caro High School didn't per se have a mascot, but in all of the yearbooks and even on the back of their Letterman jackets, they had that King Tut mask. So those t-shirts I'm going to try to make available in multiple colors. Uh, if you would like to wear a Caro Pharaohs uh, t-shirt uh, for a school that closed in 1971, uh, it actually would mean a lot to me and it'd mean a lot to this community. Uh, and in order to incentivize you guys to do that, I am donating 10% of the profits to the Caro High School Alumni Association. And just to let you know, uh, the Alumni Association puts on a homecoming uh, in, I believe it's either July or September every year still. Uh, they need some help uh, getting people to continue that tradition as the graduates are getting older, but they also need uh, help because most of their money uh, that is uh, put out is actually to help Ritchie County High School students uh, get college scholarships. So if you want to support the Caro High School Alumni Association, who in turn will help provide Ritchie County uh, seniors with college scholarships, that would be great. Um, the link to that is going to be through Teespring, and the link to that is down in the, in the description, and I'll try to post a link up in the cards as well. It's a teacher's desk. That's a... Uh... If I'm not mistaken, that machine there is a mimeograph. It might also be a printer or something, but if it's a mimeograph, it's the it's an early copy machine that would print stuff in purple ink. So uh, I'm not going to go in, of course, but I am located directly under the main stairs to the high school. And you can see, wow, these have been here a long time. The person was here in 1976, 1990-something there. feel this like ominous cold breeze <laughs> coming out of here. I think if you were to enter here, I think you would be in the basement. 
Okay, so when I came up here last year, these, which I assumed were the doors, but I guess are actually just the boards that were posted over the doors, um, they were still here. And so when they say that they have a hard time keeping people out, I mean, it's, it's literally the walls collapsed and the whole place is just completely open to just walk right in. So, you see the original wood doors there, and you see they're uh, blue and gold, uh, of course, for the school colors. I wonder if they were like PHS, where the front doors are only for. Oh, look at that. I don't know if you can see it blowing in the wind, but they're. Yeah, they're roll-up uh, window things. So I've been here maybe 15 minutes now, and as you can see, there's yet this is now the third person in 15 minutes coming up here just to gawk at the place. So while normally I'm not as understanding about property owners not letting people come in and take pictures and look around, I can imagine that if you're living here on site and every few minutes, especially when you live, you know, far out rural area and every few minutes somebody's coming by to bother you, I can see why you would pretty be pretty strict about enforcing this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but on the left hand side, up above the desks, that's actually a piano that's up against the wall. And there is the stairs to the basement. I don't dare go down there. like a music stand. Strawberry fields forever. Flower power. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me today on this visit to Cairo. Um, again, uh, let this just serve as your, <laughs> your viewing of Cairo High School and allow it to serve as preservation. Uh, let the property owner be in peace. Uh, but if you would like to support me or support the channel, uh, please click that link in the description uh, or up above if it's linked in the cards and get a Cairo Pharaohs t-shirt and that is going to give 10% of the profits to the Caro High School Alumni Association to continue their homecoming and to provide scholarships to Ritchie County High School students.